obviously there were some other news as well this weekend. One of the greatest GA players of his generation, one of the greatest GA players I've seen, Lee Keegan, and in my opinion, the greatest player to never win an All Ireland medal. He retired there last week, um, in the last couple of days. Just an exceptional Gaelic footballer. You know, no, like seriously, if you're talking for what a right halfback should be, for me, the best right halfbacks I've seen is Lee Keegan and James McCarthy. Like Tomas O'Shea, definitely up there as well. But in terms of like when he was at his best, I mean, I've never seen a player more talented, more naturally gifted than Dear McConnelly. And when he was on it, that battle that he had with Lee Keegan and the fact that Lee Keegan, you know, did a pretty good job on him when he was when he was at the absolute peak of his powers. And not only that, stuck away two goals in back-to-back All-Ireland finals. And both times that he scored those goals, I have to say as a dub, I fully thought Mayo are going to win this. There's no, I cannot see how they lose the game from here. And then they did. But Lee Keegan was always one that, you have to say, he showed up every time Mayo needed him to. He absolutely led the way every time that they needed him to. You even think back to 2021, that final against Tyrone when Tyrone had just got their second goal and immediately Lee Keegan puts over a stunning point to kind of steady the ship. He was just a pure leader and he always turned up when Mayo needed him to. In my opinion, not only is he the best player to win an All-Ireland medal, not to never win an All-Ireland medal, sorry. I think he's Mayo's best player of the modern era. Like, like I really do. And um, yeah, it's going to be a huge loss for Max Day that he's gone, but uh, all the best in retirement, Lee. But what a blow for Max Day. Yeah, huge, huge loss to me. I absolutely agree with everything you've said there. Probably the best player I've seen not to win and All-Ireland made such an impact from the minute he made the breakthrough with Mayo. Just such a consistent player, whether he was playing in the full-back line, half-back line, he just had it all. He was a brilliant defender. Like what you were saying there, Like in my opinion, on his day, I think Jeremy Connolly was the best footballer in the country. He just was always so composed I rarely ever saw him get blocked. I rarely ever saw him look anxious with the ball. He always knew what to do with it. Always knew how to pick his scores. Just a f- absolutely fabulous forward. And Lee Keegan, I think nearly every time he marked him, did a job on him. Mm-hmm. You know, really just stuck to him and completely nullified his influence. And I don't think I've seen any other player, you know, do such a job on Jeremy Connolly. Just an all-rounder and those goals he scored for Mayo in all Ireland finals and they were always the same it was like yeah. you know he would just come steaming through ball like bottom corner every whether it was into the hill or down into the the Davin and I think somebody shared one of the goals he scored last night um in an Ireland final long ball in I think Aidan O'Shea caught it turned started spread and like Lee Keegan just absolutely comes thumping down Gets the ball off him and just um, slams it in. And like this is against Stephen Cluxton, probably the best goalkeeper I've ever seen in Gaelic football. And he always scored against him. This is a back. You know, he yeah. probably could have played a bit more in the forwards if Mayo could afford to let him <laughs> out yeah. of defence. But they actually could. Like, he was just too good a defender, too good a man marker to put him anywhere else. And I can't remember which final it was, whether it was oh, 16 or 17, when they lost. Um, it might have been the Dean Rock one where he threw the GPS. It was at 17, yeah. And he was like on the floor crying, the jersey yeah. nearly off his head, absolutely spent, not a vitamin of energy left. And you were kind of like, what do they have to do? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about Mayo, how they kept hurting themselves in all Ireland finals, whether it was own goals or, you know, um, I think it was Donald Vaughan who got sent off. Oh, in, wow. That was, yeah. that was, that was a crazy, that was crazy moment. And I remember, you know, I know we're going off topic here, but I remember like when he came in and he knocked uh, John Small and Aiden. I remember Aiden O'Shea's face just dropped. He knew he was gone. And yeah. then you knew Mayo were gone then because you couldn't, I mean, if you're going to beat Dublin, you're not going to, I mean, you need 15 on the pitch. You can't beat them with 14 players. Even even Mayo, who were the only team who could compete with Dublin at their absolute height in championship, nobody could compete with, with Dublin. If it wasn't for Mayo, we wouldn't have had a championship. We wouldn't have had All-Ireland finals. They were yeah. the saviour of 
um, of the season in that they they made the games competitive. And I know that is precious little to Lee. I mean, he would have he would have traded all that in for one All Ireland medal. Um, but it was it was it was something. You know, we had something to look forward to. You knew Mayo were always going to bring it against Dublin. I think there was, there was maybe one year where Dublin beat them quite heavily. 2019. Uh, 2019, yeah. But other than that, they always they were always able to compete. And even, you know I mean? Like it was Mayo who beat Dublin, you know, who yeah. stopped this juggernaut. And like you would have been part of that team as well. And like even into his, if he could have easily gone back. If he would go, if he would be an e straight number one starter, no problem with Kevin McStay. He was oh, yeah. not showing, uh, to me anyway, and I, I haven't covered too many of the, the men's intercounty games, but to me, he was still, you know, hitting standards. He was still hitting whatever numbers you need to hit to be starting in the team, whatever you need to be doing a training play and performing in matches. He was always doing it. And he was playing cornerback, you know, into his 30s. Like that, you know, because cornerback is a speed merchant's game. You need speed to be able to marshal these really mm -hmm. good forwards. And he was always able to do it. He always stood up. Any game, even when Mayo were poor, Lee Keegan was good. He always, always delivered. And it's such a pity that he will he'll have to go without an all Ireland medal. I'd say he probably thought it'll happen because they just they were always there or thereabouts. They were always in the background or getting to finals. I think if they were to, I'd say 2012 will be a one that will really kind of stick in the craw that they didn't win yeah. um, because it was the two goals. that It was it was those goals that really killed them. I think they could have beaten that Donegal team. The Dublin games, I think, you know, people didn't expect them to win anyway. And I, while they came close, I, I think it was always going to be Dublin that was going to win. Um, but to have had so many chances and and to not win a medal, like it will haunt him, obviously. But I suppose he knew he had to step away at some point. Possibly the, the Ushin Mullin, Ushin losing Ushin Mullin, um, was that a factor in him retiring? Possibly, you know, because he's obviously a huge, huge, huge player to lose, and Mayo can't really afford to lose players. They need everybody at the pump if they're going to win. Um, especially when they haven't won already. You, if if it was a team that had won something, I don't know what it does, you know, success breeds success or something. You know, you get other players to come in, but when you're always the team that's chasing, you need everybody. Um, and I look at, you know, he's married now. Maybe he's just getting into, going into a different uh, period of his life and it's just time to walk away. And also... I think if you're going to leave, you want to leave on your own terms. You don't want mm -hmm. to be there that's being kind of pushed out. Hanging on and everything. Yeah, else. yeah, yeah. And it has happened and it's happened to players who I thought were indispensable, irreplaceable, but everybody is. Time waits for nobody and the production line is bringing in players all the time and you can take that chance if you want and like to believe that you're different, but no one is. And maybe Lee thought that himself look you know if I can't win in All-Ireland at least I will finish this my way and and that's what he's done and I think he was kind of indicating that you know even in the last couple of months you know he was saying oh we'll see how the Mayo Championship goes and to like you know he's he I, I know he's going to continue playing with West Westport but like that they won the county championship maybe that's yeah. uh, you know feeding into his thinking in some way as well the fitting end in some way so, yeah, not that it's not ending with the club. He's going to continue with them. But yeah, maybe that's part of it too. You know, maybe if I put more time into the club, we could press on from what we did this year. Um, but he's a huge loss. And it's going to be very interesting to see how Kevin McStay adapts in his first, you know, in, in coming in as the new Mayo manager without two massive players and, and how they're going to cope without them. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the worst start that McStay could have had. I mean, to this, I mean, how do you get worse than that? Losing probably one of the best footballers in the country in O'Shane Mullen and then another one in Lee Keegan. I mean, and not only, but two leaders as well, two absolute threats from defence, just just the worst possible start. And to say, yeah, I, I kind of did 
see his retirement coming just in the sense that all of a sudden he was, you know, he was on RT's, you know, coverage. He started popping up on podcasts. And to me, that's always the first sign that someone is about to walk, that someone is about to retire. Once they start testing, you know, what would they do when they do retire? Once they start popping up on shows, I'm like, okay, I can, I can see this player going. I mean, Conor McManus is another one I'm saying now. Conor McManus has started popping up in the RT studio to cover games. I would not be surprised at all if Conor McManus is retired next year. I think he's, you know, he's approaching mid thirties. If he's not already there, I wouldn't know off the top of my head, but I wouldn't be surprised if he walks straight into the RT, you know, studio to be a pundit there because obviously, you know, Pat Spillane isn't there anymore. Colin O'Rourke is the new Mead boss. A lot of people, Michal Donahue is gone too. A lot of people who were RT pundits last year are gone. So I think Lee Keegan will walk in there as one of them next year as well. I wouldn't be surprised at all because he he started doing that. And the fact that Mayo were out and the fact that there was all these rumours about Oshin Mullen, I was saying like they're further away than they ever were from winning on All-Ireland when Lee Keegan was playing. Kerry showed them the ceiling in that quarterfinal and Kerry showed them the ceiling in the league final too. They were miles off the pace in both of those games and they're not going to catch Kerry next year, I don't think, especially without Oshin Mullen. And I think maybe that might have been the reason that he left. And to, to look back on what you said about the Donald Vaughan um, incident, one thing that I always found with Mayo was like, Obviously, I watched these games as a Dublin fan, wanting Dublin to win on the day. But one thing that I always noticed about Mayo is there's, there's always a moment where something happens and you're like, that's it. That, that's the moment that defines this year's short fall. Like, <laughs> like mm. 2021, it was Ryan O'Donoghue missing the penalty. 2020, it was Con O'Callaghan fisting in the second goal. 2017, it's Donald Vaughan's red card. 2016, it's the own goals. 2012, it's Michael Murphy's goal after, what, two minutes? Mm. Like, every year, there's a moment where something happens that you can't really get your head around how that just happened. Like, Michael Murphy being left in the penalty box with one <laughs> man marking him. Mm. You think, well, how has this happened? How have they allowed this to happen? And 2013... Bernard Brogan ends up one-on-one -on -one in the penalty box again for a goal exactly one year after. So Mayo made mistakes in these finals and Lee Keegan was never involved in any of them. <laughs> like He always did his absolute utmost and other people made mistakes at key moments that just meant Mayo didn't get over the line. I mean, you're looking, I think most heartbreaking one was, I can't exactly remember the year off the top of my head, but. I think it was Killian O'Connor took a free and he hit the post and then it went straight down the other end and Dublin got a free that they nailed. And I was like, that's that's the difference in these games, that inch. And I think if there was one game that Lee Keegan will actually regret, I know we talked about the 2012 final, but obviously at that time to win an All-Ireland, you had to beat Dublin. And mm -hmm. I think actually... While 2017 is definitely one that you look at and 2016 is definitely one that you look at and I'd say that they should have won both of those games. 2015, do you remember when all of a sudden it was the All-Ireland semi-final, the first game, not the replay? Yes. Where Andy Moore and equalised and there was still five minutes left. And yes, when Andy Moore the Kerry one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was where Stephen Cluxton was having a meltdown. He, he kicked two kickouts straight to Mayo. And they'd got a goal and a point off them. And there was this sense that, like, yes. Dublin are completely falling apart. And bear in mind, at this time, Dublin were not All-Ireland champions. Kerry were All-Ireland champions. And Kerry were waiting for Mayo in the final, if Mayo had beaten Dublin that day. And somehow, they just didn't finish Dublin off. It yeah. was like one of the things where they just didn't land the knockout punch. Dublin were wobbled. They were against the ropes. And Mayo just didn't land that final shot. And they should have. And they sh certainly should have in that game. And 2016, they should have as well. 2017, they should have as well. But, I mean, it's a real testament to how good that Dublin team was that they never they never tapped out. They always found a way to come back and survive and then get the win. They were serious, serious winners, that Dublin team. Yeah. But I think out of all the ones, I think that's the one that might stick in his mind the most. Yeah, and like 2015, like that's kind of the start of Dublin's emergence as well. And I don't think maybe people didn't like people probably knew 
they were going to go on a run, but they didn't expect maybe, you know, a six in a row run. I don't know if people, like at that point, no one could have known what, what Dublin were going to do at that point. Um, May, Mayo just have such a low light reel. Like they're just this inexplicable county who are as likely, like there was a time there where they were as likely to lose to like Carlo in the qualifiers yeah. as they were to possibly beat Dublin in the All-Ireland final. Like they just had such a spectrum of possibilities. They played to the level of whoever they were playing against. Exactly, it was really- exactly. They just, I don't know what it was. And there's no team like them. I think somebody has said before, ESPN's 30 for 30, they should do something on Mayo because yeah. they are such a case study. They should be put in a lab and have tests done on them. I don't understand how. But 2017 was that. They got knocked out of Connacht. I believe it was by Galway. And then they went into the qualifiers. Derry were not the Derry that they are now. They got taken to extra time by a very poor Derry side that were in Division 3 yeah, at the time. Yeah. They scraped past Clare. They scraped past a very bang average Cork team. And then they get past Ross Common. I think it was after a replay they got past Ross Common. And then they beat, all of a sudden, they beat Kerry. And then they take probably the best Dublin side I've ever seen. And they should have beaten them. It made no sense how this Mayo team that realistically should have been beaten by Derry down in the qualifiers was then, you know, should have beaten Dublin in the Mm. All-Ireland final. It was just, again, yeah, such a weird one. But either way, I think we can safely say Lee Keegan's one of the best that we've ever seen to do it. And, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see now what he does in retirement. Will he win more with Westport? Hopefully. I mean, Mm. I have to say, just I know I'm a Dublin fan and I know... But as a Gaelic football fan, I wish he won one. I really do. Yeah. I, I really wish that Mayo won one. Not only Lee Keegan, but I think Aidan O'Shea definitely deserves one. Killian O'Connor definitely deserves one. Dermot O'Connor, Keith Higgins definitely deserves one. Like, mm-hmm. all these guys are great to the game. And, you know, Dublin have, some of the Dublin players have eight. So I think, <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah, I think they, they could have. I, I wish Mayo got one. If I had to pick, obviously I'd pick that they would have beaten Tehran in the 2021 final. I wouldn't want to take away one of yeah. ours. But like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, they deserve one. He definitely mm. does. Yeah, like I know, and you were mentioned there about Killian O'Connor, um, and I, I'm not going to commit to the years here because I can't remember, but I remember writing a piece about what you mentioned there. He missed a, fi- a free in the All-Ireland final in the same position two years back-to-back in the same spot and then Dublin went on to win. And I just remember thinking, like, that just sums up the cruelty that this Mayo team cannot escape from. It just seemed like what, there was always something tripping them up, whether it was themselves or something like the, the two, like the two old goals, like that in the All Ireland final, that was just a freak. I'd never seen anything like that before. And yet, they, and they still stayed in touch. They still the, stayed in it. The worst thing about the two own goals was Dublin were playing off. They were so bad in the first 15, 20 minutes. Mayo were all over them. And Mayo scored two own goals. And Dublin were only one mm. point behind. Or were they one point ahead or something going in at halftime? Even though they played crap, they'd been nowhere near the level that they'd been at. And Mayo had helped them out with two own goals. Yeah. Like, and, he, and even in 2021, the, the semi final, like Dublin were home and host. Like they were doing a Dublin performance. They were building, you know, five points up at halftime getting ready to push on through the gears in the second half. Mayo were all over the place. Aidan O'Shea had missed that free. Do you remember he got a mark? Yeah. And he missed the free from right like right in front of the post. 13 yard line. And I remember being like, I am done with Mayo. I'm sick of being sorry for them. They don't deserve it at this point. If they get, this is what they do when they get chances like this. And then they just, you know, suddenly there was like 50 minutes gone and they weren't dead. And you're like, why aren't they dead? And then they just so sort of slowly start coming back into it. And then just this burst. And I think like Tom, it was a Tommy Conroy. Tommy yeah. um, just took total control of the game. And I remember there was one moment. Um, I'm sorry, we're kind of going off from Lee Keegan here, but mm-hmm. there was one moment. I think um I think uh Mayo had a f- uh, 50 and uh, it like it it went kind of wayward. And oh, Dermot, O'Connor. Dermot O'Connor kept the ball in and it was this like absolute lunge and the rain and everything, like an absolute downpour. And, you know, that just that just summed up how 
they just they when they and can he it, it came back out to Kevin McLaughlin and he put it over the bar. Yeah, yeah. And that just that just sort of how if they can get their fingernails in, they will stay in somehow. I, I don't they are the most fascinating team I've ever seen in any sport. And it's so it it's just it's such it's just so cruel that you know Lee Keegan's a big part of that. And there wasn't like it would have been if they had just won it once, that yeah. would have been something for him to to bring in for, to retire. But it is it's such a it's such a pity that that he doesn't have um, what he deserves going into going into retirement. And I think yeah he'll stick with with Westport. You know he won in All Ireland with them at intermediate, and I think he will target more at senior level with them. He has I think he still has goals to achieve in in the sport um he's he has started going into a bit of punditry he seems quite comfortable in it i think he's going to expand yeah. on that as well whether coaching is there for him down the line that's a possibility as well um i don't know if he's kind of dipped his toe into it too much already but i you know we'll still see him around uh he's you know he's gonna his his face will pop up um but it's just it's 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 awful he's one of the players i remember Growing, you know, well, maybe kind of as I was a bit older watching the game to see someone that's a kind of an attachment to your your growth, like your let me not my youth, but growing up that now that's another kind of link that's been yeah. that's been torn. Uh, like, yeah, I think he, he's built for the pun too because he, he speaks very very well and like you know he seems like a, he just seems like a really really nice guy to be honest. Like <laughs> like any time yeah. that I've watched him do an interview or at the end of the game. Like, don't get me wrong, he was a tough player on the pitch and definitely, like, some of his battles with Dermot Connolly kind of showed that, you know, there's a serious, serious competitor in there. But when the game was over, he shook hands, no matter what, no matter how heartbreaking the result was, no matter how in bits he was at the end of the game, he shook hands with his opponent and he showed class, you know, no matter the result. And, um, yeah just an absolute warrior seems like a really really nice guy so he's going to go into punditry because not only that i mean the stories he'll be able to tell of you know his duels with dear mcconnelly his duels with against kerry like a lot of people would be very interested to hear him tell the stories that he's had throughout his career um but yeah that's it that's a wrap on lee and um, wish him all the best